Hey, it's David and welcome back to my channel. Today, let's talk about culture shocks in the Netherlands. A little bit about myself because culture shocks are always relative. I'm originally from California, but I've been studying, living and working in the Netherlands for the past three and a half years now. And that's the beautiful thing about culture shocks is that it's part of the experience of living abroad, studying abroad, and these are my experiences and opinions. So let's start with something big. Let's talk about racism in the Netherlands. Yes, racism. The Netherlands, one of the most open, progressive, diverse countries in the world. Yes, there still exists racism. Well, in fact, racism, it's a global thing. The thing about racism here, in my opinion, is that while it might seem very blatant, an obvious a form of racism here in the Netherlands, for many Dutch people, they don't see it that way. They don't see the wrong in it. Let me explain. Black Pete is usually portrayed by white people in black face paint, wearing frizzy wigs and red lipstick. It is criticized for being racist. So we can't talk about racism without talking about the sensitive topic of Zwarte Piet, Black Pete or Black Face. But that was and still is a big cultural shock for me, seeing all these black faces during December time. So there's this Dutch tradition where they celebrate Santa Claus. Santa Claus or Saint Nicholas, an elderly white person, comes to town with his little helpers, the Zwarte Pietes or Black Pietes, and they go around town passing out candy to children. And the tradition is that adult and children will paint their faces black, wear wigs, dress up, and paint their lips red to imitate Black Pete. And for me, coming as an outsider, especially from the US, when I first saw a Black Pete, I was just shocked. I knew about it, but seeing it in person was even more shocking. And I know nobody really knows where Black Pete came from. He could come from the slave trade, or he is black because he came down a chimney and the suit made his face black. But the fact is we live in the 21st century and there's actually a lot of black people living in the Netherlands. It just seems a bit old fashioned to see people, white people paint their faces black and imitate a black peat. And by no means is this the fault of children. Children know nothing about race. They just want candy, they just want to have fun. But it's really a tradition that you have to think about. We live in the 21st century and imagine yourself as a black person growing up in the Netherlands and during this Santa Claus time, your friends and people around you are dressed up and they're painting their faces black. How would that feel? I don't know, but it just feels a little bit wrong, especially in a place like the Netherlands. The next thing I want to talk about related to racism relates to me being an Asian person in this country. One thing is a song that I recently learned about called Hanky Panky Shanghai. <laughs> Apparently this song was and is in some schools taught to children and it's supposed to be a birthday song but actually it's not about birthdays and it's a song about, well, a lot of words imitating the Chinese language like hanky, panky, and shanghai. And I've heard of stories of even kids being taught to pull their eyes back to imitate the chinky eyes. I, I don't know where this came from and I don't know why this was taught in the educational system. And I don't know why. That's the big question. That's the big shock for me. We got some bread. We got some cheese. We got some bitterballen, mustard, and mayonnaise. This, my friends, is Dutch food. Kidding, but not really kidding. Dutch culture is not known for its food. But I was shocked coming to this country and then not really because I thought to my past, I had never had Dutch food before in the US or traveling anywhere. And there's probably a reason because, well, this is Dutch food. It's not bad. I do like bitterballen. There's just not a lot of variety. I remember my first day in this country, I was in Maastricht for university. It was orientation day and we had free lunches in the cafeteria, sandwiches. So I rushed to the cafeteria. There were bags of lunches on the table. I take my bag and go to my table and I open up my bag. I look inside and I see that there's something missing in my sandwich. 
So I go back to the table with the lady and I asked her, hey, can I get a new sandwich because there's something missing in mine? And she responded, mm, no, that's your sandwich, that's your lunch. It was a slice of cheese between two slices of bread. Needless to say, I was still hungry afterwards. So I went to McDonald's, I think, and I got a few burgers. But yeah, Dutch people, Dutch culture, not known for its food. If you work for a Dutch company, oftentimes you'll gather around a table from what I hear and people will just eat sandwiches. Oh, just give me a second. I was just scheduling in a lunch two months from now, just like a Dutch person would. Because the Dutch, they love to schedule, they love to plan. And they don't plan only a few days in advance, but they plan months and sometimes years in advance for a lunch, uh, a date, or anything. And Dutch people are not very spontaneous, so you almost never show up at someone's house unannounced. Now, just a generalization, but in many ways it's true. The Dutch people, they love to be efficient, they love to save time, and they love to plan. I remember trying to schedule a, a lunch with um, a, a Dutch friend and almost every time they bust out their calendars and their agendas and they check, oh, you wanna do lunch, let me check. Oh, I have an opening two months from now, let's do lunch then. And for myself, I think of myself as a planner, but I plan things maybe a few days, a week, a few weeks in advance, not two months in advance. And that was a big shock for me. There was another colleague I was talking to and he was talking about his holidays, not for this year, but his summer holidays for next year. He had already booked his summer holidays for the next year. And I just found that extremely shocking. But in many ways, it's really nice because they're very organized, they love planning, but not so nice when you want to do things spontaneously. Dutch directness. The Dutch are some of the most direct people in the world, but don't confuse directness with rudeness. They're completely different things. You can find rude people from all over the world, but the Dutch, they just want to be honest and say what's on their minds. If you look at Erin Meyer's cultural scales, she's done years and years of research into cultural differences, and there's this low context and high context communication scale. And low context cultures like the US Canada and the Netherlands, they prefer precise, direct communication. High context cultures like Asian countries, African countries, many Latin American countries, it's really about knowing the context and they tend to be more indirect. So there's also this other scale called the negative feedback scale. And this is where the Dutch are the most direct, even when it comes to negative feedback. And this is where Americans differ from the Dutch. Americans are very direct when it comes to low context communication, but when it comes to criticism, Americans are not so direct. This is probably where the Dutch get that reputation of being harsh. It's because they're honest. If it's negative feedback or positive feedback, it doesn't matter. They're extremely honest. So don't confuse rudeness with directness. The Dutch people, I find them extremely friendly, but they will say what's on their minds, positive or negative. Housing is a nightmare. It's stressful. That was a big shock for me coming to this country. I didn't understand or know how competitive it was to find a place here. Even if you have money, it's still competitive. Whether you're a student, a full-time worker, whether you're renting or buying, it's going to be really hard to find a place to live in this country, especially in Amsterdam. Because once a listing goes live, you only have a few hours to respond, to get a viewing. And if you get that viewing, you have to take time out of your day. It's usually one day and maybe 20 minutes or one hour. And if you don't go, then you miss the viewing and you don't get the place. And especially if you have a full-time job, it's really hard to take time out of your day to go to a viewing the next day. So I've never seen a market this competitive. And I come from San Francisco where it's extremely expensive. There's just not enough supply for the high demand here. So yeah, be on the lookout for that because I'm currently looking for a one bedroom 
and I'm pretty stressed out. So just be aware that if you want to find a place to live, it's going to take a lot of time, a lot of effort, and a lot of resilience. So if you decide to rent, you might come across an apartment that's completely furnished, nice. You might come across an apartment that is not furnished but has floors. But you also might come across many apartments that have nothing at all, not even floors. It's called the shell. And that was a big shock for me coming to this country and going to viewings that you had to buy your own floors and install your own floors. And the thing about that is it takes time and it takes some money to buy the floors. It might not cost a lot less than a thousand euros from Ikea, but the time it takes to install the floors, you might pay someone a few thousand euros to install the floors too. And when you leave, you either have to take your floors with you or you sell your floors to the next tenant. So I don't know how I feel about that, but yeah, I never experienced that before. Definitely a shock. So when you go rent, be prepared to rent an apartment with no floors where you have to buy your own floors and install your own floors. So yes, when you come to the Netherlands, you might see the canals, the architecture. You also see big windows, big open windows without curtains. And that was a big shock for me when I first came here and I was walking along the canals. And then I saw inside the windows what families were doing, people working, people reading. And that's the shock for me because there seems to be no privacy at all. But when you dig a bit deeper, it's tied to their culture. And it goes back to Calvinism, which basically says, if you are an honest person, you have nothing to hide. So these open windows show that Dutch people have nothing to hide inside their homes. Also, the fact that when you open up your windows, you get more light in and some people say that they feel more connected to the outside world when they open up their windows without curtains. So it might be a shock, but it's a pleasant shock when you come to the Netherlands. If you want to see a doctor in the Netherlands, then you might have to exaggerate that you're almost dying. Well, I'm exaggerating, but not really. But I was shocked when I first came to this country and a lot of international friends told me advice. Hey, if you ever need to see a doctor, you need to exaggerate because the culture here is that people don't go to their doctors for minor things like being sick with a cold, a flu, fever. They go to the doctors for big things. And, and that's very different compared to a place like the US where people go for annual checkups. They go to see the doctor because they're sick. But here, you go to the doctors for big things. If it's something minor, the doctor will tell you, go take some paracetamol, uh, feel better, and set you off. And this pissed off a few of my friends because they did actually have quite, uh, it wasn't big, but it wasn't minor as well, issues. And the doctors, nurses turned them away. So you really have to exaggerate to get seen here. The other thing is that your GP, your general practitioner, your doctor, Pretty much everything goes through your GP. And I learned this the hard way because in my first month here, I was at a park and I got bit by a dog, a pit bull. And luckily there were some police officers around and they were nice and caring. They told me to go next door to the hospital to get a tetanus shot. So I go to the hospital and I try to get a tetanus shot but the nurse turned me down because the bite wasn't big enough and told me to go to my GP. Unfortunately, at that time, I did not have a GP. That was my fault. But the nurse started like scolding me like, oh, why don't you have a GP? You should have a GP. And I was just shocked because, well, I was shocked because of the dog bite. And then the second thing was that I couldn't get treated that, and she was scolding me at the same time. And yes, I know it was my fault, but I was just e extremely shocked at that point in time. So lesson learned, everything goes through your GP. Register for a GP when you first arrive. And two, if you want to get seen by a doctor, then you really have to exaggerate what you have. If you need to pee and you're in Amsterdam and you don't want to pay to use a toilet, well, you're in luck because there are these public urinals in Amsterdam on busy streets, on the canals, and they're free. This is a urinal and it's illuminated. It's like the most futuristic thing I've seen in this whole place. It's just you go and you just pee in it. 
for free. And it's part weird, but also part convenient as well, because sometimes you just need to go. And there's actually an app to track all these urinals in Amsterdam as well. They're very convenient. And what's weird is that, yeah, you just pee and you see the piss splattering on the ground. And what's even weirder is that there are these quadruple urinals. So four of them side by side, and you're just peeing next to three other guys on a public street while people are shopping around you. And so, yeah. I love my coffee, but here's a quick tip. If you're in the Netherlands and you're looking for a coffee shop, don't ask for a coffee shop. That means something completely different here. That's a lesson that I learned. Coffee shops here are weed, cannabis, and marijuana shops. If you're looking for coffee, look for a cafe. Well, that's it for me when it comes to culture shocks. Yes, I could talk about many more, but the thing about culture shocks is that there might not be a right or a wrong answer. It's just different because we come from a different culture, a different country, and that's the beauty of it, right? When you move abroad, you live abroad, you study abroad, and there are some things that you might get used to, some things that you will never get used to, and that's okay. Anyways, let me know what culture shocks you've experienced coming to the Netherlands, and I hope you take care and have a great one.